Hi everybody, welcome back. Now let us discuss, not discuss, let us look at how to use scope to handle exceptions in Oracle integration. So let's let me demonstrate an end-to-end -end example which will help you to understand how to use scope action to handle the exceptions. Let's go to the integration canvas here. So let me create a integration, the app driven based integration where I'll say fetch employee details. Okay. And create. So here I am going to create one REST API. Get e employee. Next, I will give a endpoint name as EMP. It will be verb as a get, add and review parameters for this endpoint and configure this endpoint to receive the response. Next, let me add one parameter with name ID and the data type will be integer. Okay, click on the next button and in the response, I will choose the JSON and here click on a inline. So let me give one JSON here the status. So here I will send the status, whether it's a fail or success and first name, last name, age and department. Click OK. Next and then finish. Okay, now here I am going to use my DBAS adapter to fetch the information from employee table. Fetch EMP details and then perform an operation on a table and use select operation. And next operation on a table, I will use my schema which is CXX, XX test and search all the tables and use this employee next and then import tables when you click on import tables here let's review and edit sql query where i can add one where close edit and let's see where id equals to hash emp id so i will add this EMP ID as a parameter here and add here. You can see this has been added here. Okay. And then, okay. Next. And done. Let me configure the request here, which is my ID query parameter ID. all this apply and then here let me map the response so simply creating our integration without handling the exception create target node and let's say success and then fetch employee detail response employee collection employee let's say first name last name department age that's it one two three four okay cool validate and then close and enable the business identifier which is my id save and then come back. Now here, let's activate this integration and let's test it. Okay, go. Cool. Fine, let's run this integration and see what happens. Okay, so it requires an ID. Let's enter the ID 380, which is the correct ID 380. 
and I receive the result, status success, first name A, last name B, age or default, and department ID. Now let me enter some this, a invalid ID. And here you will receive an error called 500 internal server error, maybe meaning you have received an error. Maybe for the end user, there is no meaning of this 500 internal server error. They will not know about this error. But if you see this error says, maybe uh, you can find out Aura01722, query name, descriptor name, maybe you will get say invalid number. So here it will show you where the integration got failed, error processing message in invoke patch employee details. That's where the integration has been failed, right? And you see get error in reply to get employee. That is what you have received. Now, instead of sending this 500 internal server error, I wanted to send a friendly message to the user so that they can understand. Okay, now the integration is in the failed state. I can show you here under observability, under integration, and you see this integration is in error state. Now let's try to handle the exceptions and send a email when error occurred. Let me deactivate this integration and then handle the errors here. So to handle an error, we have one action called scope. Scope is like try and catch. Try where you configure your code. Catch is the block where you handle the exceptions. Like you send the error details in a database or you log or you send a notification with error details. So let me drag and drop this scope action. Action and when you drop it, it will open this. You can rename this. Let's say edit. Let's say error handler and then apply. So it will change the name here. Okay. Fine. So you have to click. Now, here this is my try block. Where is catch? You click on these three dots, click on the fault handler. Here is your catch block with name default handler. As of now, you don't, you don't see any right symbol here. When you click here, meaning you have configured the catch block. Click here and you see you are in the default handler now. This is a catch block. Now you can go back, click here, show scope block error handler. Now I am in try. Now, if you click again, fault handler, you see right symbol, meaning you have handled the exception. Though you have not configured anything, but it says you have handled the exception. Click here. Now here you will see a option called delete. When you click on the three dots and click on a delete, the default handler will be deleted. You see delete fault default handler, meaning you have deleted your handler. Now, as of now, you only see one handler with name default handler. Okay. Now let's move this here. Click here and cut and click here and then paste. Okay. I will associate. I will also cut this mapper and paste it here. Okay. And similar this one. Cut and paste here. So I have moved everything inside the scope. Now, if you click again on three dots, fault handler, you will also see one more handler, which is called named fault handler. And this is related to this Oracle DBAS service invocation error. So we have two different catch blocks. One is related to the DBAS and second is your default. This is your catch. This is your catch all. So if you have configured any handler here, when you click here, you will see the service invocation handler. You can go back and this time you will see this has been checked, meaning you have handled error in this particular scope. So you can handle DB related exception under this handler. Okay, if you have not configured it, let me delete this. Okay, now 
if you don't configure a specific handler related to any invocation, you can use default handler. Any error which comes in, which comes in this block will be handled by this default handler if you have not configured any named handler. So click here default handler. Now here what I want, I want to send a email notification before I send a friendly message. So here I will use one action called notification. Notification here, drag and drop. And I will configure this. Two, to whom I would like to send an email. Let me say a email address called taxsupper.ts at gmail.com. Okay. And then from from no hyphen reply at oracle.com and then subject in the subject i would like to make the subject dynamically where i will mention the integration name plus instance id so here we have a self node under metadata we have two integration and runtime integration will have name of the integration where the error occurred identifier meaning version sorry the unique identifier and its version. Let me use a concat function here. And let's say integration. Okay, name. Oh, I guess I have to use this. Concat integration. Okay. Of instance. integration with instance id with instance id this is my instance id and runtime with instance id with instance id has been built so concat integration and then its name with instance with instance here with instance id has been failed okay now let's configure the body hi <laughs> Hi, team. Okay, sorry, the hi team the integration has been failed due to the following issues so here i would like to send as a code and then error details okay so here i will create two different parameters here okay one is error code and error detail so uh, uh, anything you would like to provide dynamically in the body you have to create a parameter from this table plus you give a parameter name let's say error code and then you will see this error handler fault object this you will get only in handlers error code reason and then details so let's say error code Okay, and then create one more variable. Let me create another variable, let's say, error reason. Okay, and then here I will put a reason here. Okay, then I will use these two variables in the body itself. One is error code. One is the error code and second is the 
error reason. And let's see regard T. So this is my body. That's it. Come back. No, some error here in the concatenation. Let me clean this and let me try again. Okay. Concat integration, comma. Integration name with instance IT okay comma has been filled. That's it. Now close this and let's see. That is fine now. And let's use the mapper here to map the user-friendly message. Click here and then create. Now I will simply map the status, create target node. Let's set the literal here. Let's say due to some internal issues, the data could, could could not be fetched. Please contact admin. Okay. And then that's it. Validate. And then close your integration and let's see what happens now. Okay. Now save and then close. Now here, let's activate this integration. Okay, run. Let me test the happy flow. Run. Here you see, we have received 200 OK success, A, B and data. Now let me enter with some invalid number and let's say run. Here you see due to some internal issue, the data could not be fetched. Please contact admin. But where I see the error now, you should receive our email. And here you see invoke fetch mail details. The error has been occurred while fetching the employee details. After this, message entered fault handler of error handler message received by notification and the data mapper everything is here now let me show you the email here which i have received integration patch employee details this is the integration name with instance id has been failed and here the integration has been failed due to the following issue. This is the error code and this is the error details that has been sent over email. Okay. And now when you go back to your monitoring tab and you will find the integration is in success status now. The reason is we have handled the error. So guys, this is how you can use a scope action to handle your errors in the integration. That's all about this. Thank you. Bye-bye.